What is something scary that has happened to you that you cannot explain rationally? Part 2. Sit back, relax, and soak it all in. If you like what you hear, hit subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your crew. Account 1. My fiancé dealt with sleep paralysis for about a year a while back. It was fucking terrifying. Because of it now, anytime he makes weird noises, I instantly wake up. I was already a light sleeper and wake him up. There was once that he had fallen asleep on my couch. And I was sitting upright with my back on his stomach. He was sleeping on his side. And he started making very faint but frantic wheezing noises and swaying back and forth. But very gently. It took me a little while to feel it or to hear him. As soon as I did, I shook him awake. He said he had woken up but couldn't move or speak, really. My mom had been sitting on the couch across from us, and he said there was a shadowy figure that was next to her, and it kept creeping ever so slightly towards him, until the figure finally flew towards him, and that's when I finally felt him moving and woke him up. Account 2. I was sitting with friends on a beach one night really late, with no drugs or alcohol. We started to see something ambling down the beach toward us. As it got closer, but still like 50 yards away, we thought it was a skunk because of the way it moved. We all quietly watched as it came closer, and it became clear that something really strange was going on. It was a ball of light. It wasn't casting any light, but it was light. It wasn't glowing, and it was transparent. It moved like an ambling skunk, and at about that speed, and it was about that size. We all quietly confirmed with each other that we were all seeing this, and that we all felt an unnerving sense of doom. We sat very still. Then I realized that if I let my feeling of terror stop me from investigating this phenomenon, then I would forever have to wonder about it. I got up and walked slowly closer to it, and this feeling of dread and doom and the overwhelming urge to leave as quickly as possible started weighing heavier and heavier on me. But I'm really stubborn. It was my friends begging me to please stop and that we have to go that finally got me to turn around and go. I got within about six feet of it. It had stopped in front of us, and had seemed to acknowledge us in some strange ball-of-not-light kind of way. It didn't undulate or glow or anything you would expect light to do. I've had other odd experiences, and most of them I can sort of concede that they might be hallucinations or something else from my own brain. But this was different, and my friends felt the same thing. I've been baffled by it ever since. Count three. I hit a car in my company van and saw her baby splatter against the window. I got out and ran as fast as I could. The car was wrapped around the car seat like it was unbreakable. The rest of the car was trash. The baby was fine. I'm 100% certain that baby was a bloody mess all over the car. I saw it. I had blood on the window of my van when I got out. When I got back in to get the insurance camera, there was no blood. I've never understood it. Something shifted or my mind lied to me. Account 4. Seven years ago, I lived in a two-story farmhouse. It was built in 1908 and was both large and old. I was packing clothes and putting them in a small, unused bedroom. I was wearing my MP3 player, and the last time I checked, it showed three-fourths battery life. I was on my fourth or so trip and was hauling a load of shirts on hangers. It occurred to me the closet was empty, too. Perfect, I'll just hang them back up in there. This closet was almost a second room. It had a short, glossy wooden door. The area was thrice as long as wide with hardwood floors. The lacquer still smelled, even though I'm sure it was fresh a hundred years ago. I ducked fully inside and thought, this is a weird little place to be. Suddenly, the music doubled in volume and changed to something that wasn't music. It was like, I don't even know, rapid nonsense, fast electronic babbling. It scared the entire fuck out of me. I flew straight out, looked at my player, and it was dead. I'm a pretty rational guy. That MP3 player would sometimes show more battery life than it actually had. It's done that before. And maybe the sounds were some sort of malfunction before shutting down. I don't really believe in ghosts, but I'm telling you, it shocked and frightened me to the core. My skin felt electric for an hour after. I never felt comfortable in that room again. TLDR entered a creepy closet. MP3 player screamed gibberish and died. Account 5. I know I'm a bit late, but I have a good story for this. So a few years back, probably six, seven years, my family was living in our previous home. This was our second house we had in Ohio. The first house was about two streets over from our second house. Well, one night my mom woke me up and was acting really panicked. 
She grabbed my brother, who was probably five at the time, and told me to go outside. It was about four in the morning, and once we all got outside, my dad tried to calm my mom down. He asked her what was wrong, and she had explained that she had a dream that we were all going to die from carbon monoxide poisoning if we stayed in the house. Then my dad told her that all the detectors were working perfectly fine, and we decided to go back inside. We didn't smell anything, nor did the detectors go off, so we went to bed. The next day, my mom was watching the morning news before we went to school. The first story for the day was that a local family was rushed out of their home because of a carbon monoxide leak in their home, which could have been just coincidence, but then the news station showed the house. It was our old house that we just moved out of. There are actually a few stories that are pretty supernatural that I have about my family, but this is the shortest one, to be honest. Account 6. So I was staying at my aunt's house in Mexico. My cousin's room had two beds, so I slept in there. I remember not being able to sleep well, and I had a bit of pain coming from my thighs. I had sweatpants on and somehow had scratches on my inner thighs, almost like a bunch of cat scratches. My aunt came in and searched the bed for anything, but never found anything that could have scratched me. She also noticed that I had a bit of bruising on my neck as if someone had tried to choke me. It was just me and my cousin, definitely freaked me out, and I rarely ever go visit my aunt anymore. If I do, I stay for a few minutes only. Sorry for bad formatting, I'm on mobile. Account 7. After my grandpa died, my grandma said she could feel someone getting into bed with her nearly every night, but we didn't believe her. One night I was watching TV in the living room trying to fall asleep when I heard footsteps in the hallway leading to my grandma's bedroom. I looked out into the hallway and couldn't see anyone, and this happened for probably a minute. Immediately after the footsteps stopped, the TV turned off. I stayed awake for another hour or so, but didn't hear anything after that. Account 8. The house I grew up in was about 100 years old by the time my parents bought it. I lived there until I was 16. For as long as I can remember, I saw what I described as a girl that was pink and see-through. I always called her Pam. It has been 10 years since I lived in that house, and I still remember her vividly. My dad got a bit weirded out when I would talk about Pam. And finally, when I was 13, my mom put me in therapy because Pam was still something I brought up regularly. In order to stop my parents from thinking I was crazy, I just stopped talking about Pam completely and went on with life. That was until my parents decided to put the house up for sale when I was 16. Just two weeks before moving into our new house, I was sleeping, but was woken up by Pam standing in my doorway and pointing into the bathroom that was directly across the hall. All Pam said was, look, my mom. And when I looked to see who she was pointing at, I saw a woman hanging by a cord from the light fixture in the bathroom. I remember the woman looked as though she had been hanging there for a while. When all of a sudden the woman's boot fell off and I abruptly woke up. I ran into my parents' room to tell them what happened and my mom looked at me disappointed because I was talking about Pam again after having kept quiet about her for years. I concluded that it was just a bad dream and went back to bed with no other incidences. Until a few days later, I was once again asleep and dreaming that I was woken up by crying coming from the bathroom across the hall. I got out of bed and walked over to see what was going on. At that point, I saw the same woman that was hanging from the bathroom light fixture sobbing and holding a very real little girl under the water in the bathtub. It was then that I realized that the little girl was the little pink see-through girl I had seen my entire life. It was Pam, and she was not moving. I immediately woke up and I was crying uncontrollably. I was 16 years old, and I ran into my parents' room like a five-year-old and jumped into bed with my mom. My dad was working at the time. I told my mom what had happened, and my mom could see how upset I was and was trying to calm me down. At that same moment, the pink and transparent version of Pam walked through the door. I looked at my mom and just whispered, Oh my God, Mom, she's in here, and I pulled the covers up to my neck and just looked at my mom terrified. My mom was speechless. At that point, Pam slowly walked up the side of the bed and began shoving me into my mom. I had never been touched by Pam before. I was screaming and crying and kept yelling, stop touching me. And all that my mom could reply was, I'm not touching you, as she was being pushed out of the other side of the bed. After what seemed like forever, Pam stopped and slowly walked out of the room. I cried myself to sleep and my mom stayed awake to see what else would happen. I never spent another night in that house.
but two weeks after we moved out completely, the house caught fire. The entire backside as well as the entire garage burnt. The official cause was spontaneous combustion. The house that my family lived in for 25 years has since been bought and sold eight times within 10 years. No one wants to stay in that house, and I really think that Pam is the reason why. Account 9. TLDR. That sinking feeling you get when you think someone unseen is watching you is not always wrong. Hunter Mountaineer here. It was a chilly December morning. I hiked in pre-dawn, taking about an hour and a half to go three miles off the beaten trails. Got to my nest about half an hour before sunrise and started to settle in. The wind kicked up and a fog rolled in that was thicker than milk. Within a few minutes, my visibility was five. I'm sitting tight, huddled up against the freezing wind when I start to hear twigs snapping close to me. For no apparent reason, what is normally a rapturous sound indicative of an imminently successful hunt sent a frosty chill down my spine. I chambered around in my lever action 30-30 as quietly as I could and lay flat on my back tucked against a fallen tree. The rustling was moving closer through the fog, but I couldn't see anything. The sun was starting to peek over the mountains to my east, and visibility was starting to increase. The rustling of twigs and leaves was sporadic, sometimes directly in front of me, sometimes behind or beside me. I remember laying there, rifle across my chest, thinking to myself how silly it was to react like such a coward. I reasoned with myself that bears and mountain lions are a rarity where I was, and I had likely stumbled into a herd of whitetail that had bedded down. I decided to sit up. The rustling stopped immediately. As it was fully dawn by now, I was looking through the fog for the outline of my prey, which I had assured myself was literally all around me. It wasn't. Seemingly nothing was. By now the fog had faded away, and it was apparent to me that I was alone in those woods. I hunted all that day without seeing so much as a squirrel. Around three in the afternoon, after fighting the wind and an abnormally cold day, and not wanting to hike out by flashlight, I decided it was time to start back to the truck. Walking out of those woods was the most uneasy I have ever felt. Lawfully, once you make it back to the trail, you are supposed to clear the chamber of your rifle. Not that day. What is normally a stroll through the woods, I undertook with the seriousness of an animal being stalked. I would walk, then stop and listen. I never heard or saw anything during my retreat, but I could feel eyes on me. I was about a hundred feet away from my truck when I rounded the last corner and saw, hanging at eye level from a tree by a noose, a stuffed bear in a blaze orange jacket. I'm a giant broad-shouldered outdoorsman, but that one shook me something fierce. Account 10. I was once sitting on the couch with my boyfriend and heard the words, I love you. And then my boyfriend goes, I love you too. I was so utterly confused. I was not the one who said, I love you. My mouth was shut. I remember hearing and feeling the vibrations of words and sound being produced, but I was not the one who did it. And he was not either. It sounded like a feminine voice. It sounded like it came from right in front of my face, but no one was outside the window or in the room with us. It was creepy as hell. I still think about it. Account 11. A week ago tomorrow, I came home from class at around 11.30 and no one else was home. I hung out at home for a bit, and at 2.30, I was overcome with sleepiness. Being the bum that I am, I laid down in my bed and set a timer on my phone for a 20-minute nap. I fell asleep quickly, and after around five minutes, I was woken up by my bedroom door opening and had a split second of panic before my dog jumping up onto my bed and laying down next to me. I fell back asleep. After another five minutes of sleep, I instantly jolted awake because I was certain there was someone standing next to my bed behind me. I assumed it was my mother, who would likely be pissed that I was sleeping in the middle of the day. I woke and turned around in one movement, and there was no one there. Weird. I checked my phone and had another eight minutes of sleep left. I went back to sleep only to be woken by my phone ringing. It was my mother. She said that my great aunt, who had been in the hospital after a stroke-like event for a week, had died around one o'clock. My mom then said she knew my aunt was going to die today because she had seen a wraith, a sort of ghost, usually warning of someone dying that morning. My mom is Scottish and very superstitious, but I do not believe in any of that. She said that when she woke up that morning to take my brother to school, she went into my room to see if I was still asleep. She saw a wraith standing next to my bed. My brain shit itself. 
Account 12. My ex-wife and I bought an older house from the 1930s. We were renovating and had put some baseboards into the basement, painted them, and left them to dry overnight. We looked at them the next morning, and it looked like someone had taken a sharp knife and dug it down the entire length of two of the baseboards, almost eight feet each. The blade had gouged through the new paint, old paint, primer, and right down to the wood. It was just the two of us in the house. Count 13. My family moved into an old house, 200 plus years old, when I was 10. My uncle, a weird guy, was going to help us move in. And when we got inside the house, he got all weird and left. He always avoided coming for birthdays, etc. We always joked that he saw a ghost, and for some reason we nicknamed the ghost Billy. When my little sister started talking, she would say really weird things, like asking if we can shut her door at night so she doesn't have to see the boy walking down the hallway. Fucking creepy. Anyways, we thought she was also just being a big weirdo, so we continued to have this Billy the Ghost joke. Something would get misplaced. Must be Billy, yada yada. A few years later, we ripped up the flooring because we wanted to go back to the original hardwood that had been covered up forever ago by old owners. And if you know anything about old houses, you know they used to insulate the floor with newspaper when newspaper just became a thing. We decided to read some articles for fun, some talking about the first ever refrigerators, really cool things like that. Until we got to the creepy part, a mentally challenged boy named Billy, who lived in our home, died while playing outside of it. I saw a lot of shit growing up in that house, but I am not a huge ghost believer. The newspaper was a fucking creepy coincidence, though, given that for years we had an ongoing Billy the Ghost joke. My uncle also ended up telling us years later that when he pulled into the driveway and was outside of the house, he just got this awful feeling. Account 14. When I was little, I would go over to my grandparents' house frequently with my sister and cousins. My grandparents have an attached mother-in-law apartment, so we always played in there while the grown-ups would talk in the main house. One day, we were playing hot and cold with a little key we found in the apartment. While one person was hiding it, they accidentally dropped it, and it fell under the door to the basement. I opened the door to get it, and when I did, there was a man standing at the bottom of the stairs that I didn't recognize. He had a bunch of stuff in his arms like he had rummaged through my grandparents' basement. Keep in mind, my grandparents were hoarders. Their basement was full of stuff that they either forgot about or put in storage, some of it being relatively valuable. When he saw me, he yelled at me, Go back upstairs, kid, go! I was so freaked out, I bolted and immediately ran into the main house to tell my parents. My dad went into the basement to look, but couldn't find anyone. To this day, they all tell me I imagined it, but my sister and cousins insist it's real too. About five years later, both of my grandparents passed away, so I was helping my dad clean out their basement. Turns out they were missing a ton of stuff. I haven't gone back in that house since. Account 15. I used to date a girl in college who lived three hours away. We would trade weekends, one at her school, one at my school. One day she got upset because she had driven all the way to see me, and I was in an all-night study session, which she had known about, and couldn't be home to see her. She texted me that she was going back to her place, and then I never heard anything from her ever again. After three days of texting her trying to make sure she was okay, the texts started coming back as, Number not found. I sent her the stuff she had left at my apartment in the mail, and it returned as, no forwarding address. Her instant messenger account, which I never messaged but knew the name of, disconnected. And it gets weirder. I called her apartment landline and was told the people who had lived there had moved out. She had three roommates and didn't leave a number as to where they went. I got really freaked out and asked friends who worked in school admin to pull some strings, just to make sure she was alive. The school she was at didn't have any records of her as a student. The license plate to her car wasn't registered to anyone. None of our mutual friends ever saw her again. I called the police, but there were no car accidents involving anyone who fit her description in the stretch of road between our two schools that night or in the two weeks after. I didn't ask for a longer time frame because at that point she was already missing. Cops wouldn't file a missing person because I wasn't a family member. To this day, I have no idea what happened, why she freaked out on me so bad, or if she's still alive or in witness protection or was erased from all time by an evil wizard. She literally disappeared without a trace.